Green flag off of turn number four, 77 machine of Vautier. It looks like Esteban Guerrieri has some company and Victor Carboni to the bottom side. Sebastian Saavedra is right there to the high side of Guerrieri. He wants that second spot. And Davey, those cars look awfully fast off the banking out of turn two. Yeah, they do. I think with Guerrieri made him a little mistake. He tried to block his own teammate, Carboni, and then it allowed, allowed uh, uh, Sebastian to come on the outside of him. So Guerrieri grabs the third spot. Carboni is fourth. Then it looks like the team more cars run just behind them in fifth and sixth with the crepes and waffles machine of Gustavo Jacobin trying to catch that lead pack. So off of turn number one comes Tristan Bautier. Bautier has about a five, six, maybe seven car length advantage over the 27 machine of Sebastian Saavedra. Davey, uh, it, it almost at times, I guess, in the Firestone and Delights, doesn't matter whether it's an oval or a road course, uh, the guy that gets out front usually stays up. Yeah, it usually does. Now, I think it could change up later in this race as tire wear uh, starts working on these cars. The handling's going to go off. And, by the way, they haven't they haven't tested or ran in these conditions either. It's pretty cool out there, and it's, it's definitely nighttime for sure now. Well, they uh, had a 45-minute practice session around 3 o'clock local time this afternoon, and quite frankly, the, the, there was a debris, quote-unquote, debris caution called when they were mixing it up pretty good. <laughs> And then I think race control, Tony Cobbin and company were so displeased with the way that they were, uh, you know, running with one another during a practice session that, that they threw the yellows and, and, and the checkers all at once and effectively into the session about five minutes early. Yeah, well, I think I seen the blade of grass blow up on the racetrack there for the debris <laughs> because, uh, but those guys, they were getting pretty, it was, yeah. it looked like it does right now, like a full on race. And uh, the, the last thing they need is, uh, you know, unfortunately we have a little bit of a short car count in the end of the Fire Light Series. So the last thing you want is cars getting crashed in practice that can't, can't make the NFL. Oh, he's going to shoot down underneath. I'm going to three right now. Is he going to be able to clear him? Uh, tight quarters coming off turn four right Not now. Not a lot of room there if he exited turn number four. Davey, uh, much like the IZOD IndyCar Series, even though the uh, chassis and engine package hasn't changed, once upon a time, a car would get down on that yellow line and stay there all the way around, but even the lights cars are using the whole racetrack now. Is that the difference in the tire compound? Well, I think it is a little bit of the difference in the tire comp compound, and these cars do have a little bit less downforce now. It, it is good to see that, that these guys aren't just going to be flat out all the way around. Now, I would have to say your first three guys, as consistent times as they're running, and as close as they're running, they may be close to flat, but it's not going to be for long. They're going to have to start lifting, start breathing, the cars move around. And that's what they're supposed to do. You need experience out of these to move into the Eyes on IndyCar series. So you want that same kind of handling characteristics out of this that goes into the IndyCar. Now Gustavo Jakobin's car starts to fall off, uh, fall off just a little bit. Uh, the 22 machine of David Ostella works around his teammate. Munoz now has some company at Carbone. They run side by side for about a lap and a half. That battle wages, uh, rages on off of turn number four. Well, they both have came back to life a little bit. They fell back, Carbone and Munoz, who we're talking about. And now they're side by side, far behind those two more cars. And I'm surprised at Gus. He did fall off. He still got by him. He's actually pulled away a little bit. So what's what? What has changed with the Firestone and the Lights cars that, that, that no longer makes a driver comfortable running side by side? Is, the, is it the downforce they've taken yeah, off the cars? I think it's the, the downforce that just is lacking a bit. And, and um, you know, I think that they came with maybe a little, I don't know, we'd have to ask Joe on the tires if the tires are any different at all. And another thing, you know, as we said before, I know the IndyCar just ran 250 laps, but I don't see a rubber line down like we've right. seen yesterday. So it could be a situation where there's just not as much grip on the track as there was when they were practicing and testing. 60 laps complete now. Vautier goes to the bottom side, and I'll tell you what, he about ran Gary Airy down into the yard, Davey. Wow, what a race. I mean, he caught so much ground. As you said, Mark, the lap traffic really slowed down Tristan, and he is there. now he's going to get underneath him. He had over probably the quarter of a straightaway lead at least. That lap traffic slowed him down, almost took it all away. Yep, they're now working their way around Anders Krohn and the car of Mike Larrison. So Gary Erie, right now it appears as though has a much faster race car, but Tristan Vautier is pulling away from him just a bit. Juan Pablo Garcia went back out onto the racetrack. He's awfully slow. He's running below the yellow line. Vautier needs to be careful. From a points championship, Davey, he needs to be in damage control mode right now. He doesn't need to drive the wheels off that car and lose the handling altogether no. maybe end up in the fence. Yeah, he's, he's got such a, such a, you know, I mean, an advantage right now. Just just be calm, take it easy, and, and think about points at this point. Because, you know, the, the, he's still going to finish higher than Saavedra. Right. No question about yeah. that. And, and he knows probably at the very least he's, he's going to come out of here 
still probably second or third in points because Saavedra, as we said, was 14 back. Vautier was leading by three over Gary Airy, but then Carboni was 59 points back. That's right. So, so that minimized the damage. It did minimize the damage for sure. And you know, it's, you hate to say it, but the point championship just keeps getting tighter and tighter. Right. And it, it did the same thing in the, earlier today in the Eyes on IndyCar series. So that makes it exciting. You want to see great championships. You don't want to see anybody have bad luck. That was a little bit self-inflicted luck there uh, by blocking. 81 laps complete. Gary Eri, Carboni, Yakiman, Ostella, Munoz, Goncalves, Krohn, Votier, Austin, and Kloss in your top ten. Then Webb, Larison, Saavedra is out. Uh, Garcia continues on the course, but he's had some struggles today. Talking about the Izod IndyCar Series race, Dario Franchitti, second straight DNF, didn't even complete a lap. The engine grenaded on the parade lap. It was a slugfest, if you will. Will Power had an accident. He ended up against the turn two wall. Ryan Briscoe was leading. He ended up against the turn two wall. And Davey, as we head to Toronto in a couple of weeks, 51 points. 51 points, that's all, separate the top seven in the eyes of the Yeah, that's have fun. That, that's going to be a lot of racing left, Mark. And we're back. Uh, we're, we're off the oval streak, so we're back on the street roads uh, with the next one being a street race in the, the streets of Toronto. And... Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting points championship for sure. Well, Gary Airy looks to the bottom side of Webb. Votier really trying to shoehorn his way in there. That's awfully tight quarters now. Oh, he has Carlos Munoz to the high side. Munoz cuts the nose right off of the number four machine of Jorge Goncalves. Votier clears that traffic now. And we see Lawson running just in front of the number 11 machine of Esteban Guerrieri. Yeah, it's interesting. That's that's a fun race. You know, there's, as we said before, 14 cars started this race. Not what we're used to seeing, not what we like to see. But it's amazing how good the racing is and how close they are. I mean, yeah, for sure, the leader is checked out right now with Guerrieri. That was only because of some penalties of his teammate. Um, uh, how bad? He's in fifth right now. Tristan's in fifth place right now. Yep, got Calvez and uh, let's see, got Calvez and Munoz continue to run side by side. Christian Vautier now unlaps himself, Davey, as he works his way around Esteban Guerrieri and Brian Clausen. Guerrieri to the bottom side of Clausen in turn number one. So Vautier has unlapped himself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's on the same lap after a drive through and here comes Jacob. There is three cars between him and the leader, but um, I'm now two cars. Now two cars between the leader and I think, you know, we how many laps we got to go here? Mark eight, or Mark eight laps to go, and he is now. Now right there's no him. cars now between no him cars and the leader. Yeah. Oh, yellow flag. Yep, yellow, yellow flag. Turn four. And, and it's uh, Oliver Webb, the number seven machine of Oliver Webb. Looks like has made contact with uh, the uh, right sides on the outside retaining wall. The struggles continue for that young man who had such high hopes coming into the season, baby. And guess what? That's the, the, a, a teammate of the leader. The last thing that needed to happen was that yellow, and the guy that brought it out is the teammate to the leader. And uh, got up too high in turn four, uh, side, you know, just slapped that right side against the wall, took the right front, the steering, and the right rear out of it, and uh, he, he comes coasting to a stop outside of turn one out of harm's way. But... Uh, I don't think they'll have this cleaned up. There's only six laps to go. Great jump by Esteban Guerrieri. Climbed on the throttle out of three, and Gustavo Jacobin now gives chase. Lap 113 complete. Guerrieri with Jacobin giving chase. Carboni, Vautier trying to get caught up as well. Jacobin starts to reel him in a bit, Davey, off of turn number three. He, I tell you what, I don't know that that was where you were supposed to start. They definitely were packed up. Caught Gus off guard, I think. Pulled out that nice lead. Got the white flag. I think he's got a big enough stretch right now to go ahead and pull, uh, pull out this one. White flag is out for Esteban Guerrieri. He comes off of turn number two and heads down the back straightaway. He looks awfully strong, and Esteban Guerrieri looking to get to victory lane for the third time of the Firestone and Delight Series. Off of turn number four, twin checkers out. Esteban Guerrieri beats Gustavo Jacobin to the start-finish line and wins a very spirit, a spirited Souk Up 100 here at Iowa Speedway. Gustavo Jacobin with a strong run is second. Carboni is third. Vautier comes storming back to finish fourth and salvage some points. And the second strong run in a row for David Ostella. He rounds out the top five.